Good. All right, Jason. Welcome to the show. It's called Bosses in Action, and you're a boss, man. So <laughs> welcome. Thanks, Tristan. I appreciate having uh, you having me here. Uh, it's exciting. So, dude, I, I did a little bit of research on you. I hit your website. The thing that stood out, which made me laugh, so that means you have a sense of humor. Instead of Fresno, <laughs> it's Fresno. Yes. So I like that you got that. So not everybody gets it, you know, but uh, that was early on in my real estate career. I wanted a way to differentiate myself from everybody else. Like this is like really when I said, okay, I'm going to be a real estate agent. You know, what do I need? I need a website. And everybody in, that I could find just had the same sites, right? There was a picture of their big mug. And, you know, sometimes they were holding their thumb up, you know, but they just had listings. They had no... No, no content, no nothing. And at the same time, I'm kind of a positive guy. And so, you know, people make fun of Fresno in, in movies and you know, Karate Kid. I mean, there's a whole list of, of, of movies where they poke fun at Fresno. And I've traveled a lot. And I think we're a pretty good place to live. So one thing led to another. I thought, there's no way I can buy that domain. There's, someone has got to have done that. And I went to GoDaddy at the time because that was back when they had the, uh, what was her name? The race car driver gal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Donica Patrick. Or yeah, something? I think that that was like, so I went to GoDaddy and sure enough, it was available. And I thought, well, that's it. I bought it. And then I just made my thing. Like, I'm going to tell this, the positive stories of our community. I don't care if one person reads it or a thousand. That's going to be my thing. And that's FressYes.com. Dude, Fresh you, yes. you made me laugh. You made me laugh. It was really <laughs> smart. We've had a few offers to, to buy it a, a few times, um, so uh, uh, which is interesting. I'd never sell it, but uh, uh, we've had a few offers from time to time. Uh, and then I had I, I registered. I got a registered trademark over it, right? I wanted to protect it because you know people would try to do things with it. And I learned quickly that that's an expensive thing to do. Yeah, because you got to defend it. Left when someone uses it, you've got to either give them permission or don't. But if you ignore it, then and anybody can use it. So that's been a, kind of a fun learning exercise over the years. But Fres, yes. All right. Well, I, I like it, dude. So let's dive into your business. Can you tell us a little bit about your business, how long you've been a real estate agent, how long you've been with Bub, and what area you cover? Yeah. So um, I'm going to say license, and you know, someone's going to check this and say that I'm wrong, but I think it's, I used to say 15 years, but I think we're probably approaching probably 18 or so years now. Uh, got into real estate uh, after selling a, a business that I owned years ago in the entertainment industry. I rented out rock climbing walls and sumo wrestling suits, that kind of thing. Uh, but my uncle was in real estate. He sold land, and so I went to work for him and then uh, went into residential shortly after. And so... Um, Follow So Follow Up Boss came actually, it was the second CRN that I really fell in love with. The first one uh, I used was Contactually. Um, and that was the, just kind of the first one I found. And mm -hmm. so I used them for years and was a happy customer. And, you know, they changed some things uh, and had some limitations and I wanted to be able to scale. Uh, and so I found Follow Up Boss. I mean, I've got to be, I think, I mean, we'd have to ask the man for sure, but gosh, I'm an old client. I mean, 10, I mean, gosh, have they been around for 10 years? Yeah. 2011. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, oh, that was a pretty good guess. Yeah. So I, I've been with them for a really long time. Once I found them, I ditched everything else that we were using and we went all in on follow-up boss. And I've had the pleasure of, of watching Dan and his team, um, you know, add different features and, and bells and whistles along the way. I liked how he did it, right? Like I think so many times we see software products uh, come into our industry who try to be too much um, or force you to use everything. Uh, and I think that's kind of a detriment for, for a lot of agents when you put too much on them, you know, and force them to do it. Yeah, that's true, especially starting off, man. I, I, I could see that. So with Follow Up Boss, what do you currently dump into it? Is it mostly your sphere? Do you get a lot of referrals? Do you get online leads? What, what does that look like? So um, great question. And, and, and everything goes in there. Everything, everything, everything. So I used to believe that you kind of needed two systems, right? I, I'd preach this LMS, which is like a lead management system. Okay. I would think of like the boom town, right? Like 
or I don't know, I always think of them when I think of lead management system. You know, um, a lead to me is somebody who's not only in your database, but who's potentially in many other real estate agents database, right? A contact is more of like somebody who I'm doing business with or have done business with or will be. I've earned enough trust uh, with them that they are telling the other real estate agents to kick rocks, right? And wow. so I always said, look, you got to have a CRM, contact relationship management system, and you got to have a LMS, a lead management system. Or, or, or I, I spoke at, um, oh gosh, I think it was reunite or rehumanize, the rehumanize event that BombBomb put on. And, you know, I, I, I really said like, you don't put your mom, right, in a lead management system, right? But your mom or your sister, your cousin, right? These people like are a very rich source of business. You already established like and trust. So where do you put them if you're just using the LMS? So what I like about Follow Up Boss is that you know you can put everybody there if you use their system you know smartly. Um, and so like my mom's in there, right? Like so is my sister, and I'm not dripping on them per se, right? But I do know that I need to reach out and and, and contact these people. Yeah. Tristan, there's a, there's a, one of my uh, associates, I just thought of this. He um, loves the, he loves the story and it's, and I was, I'll share it with you. I, I called my mom one day, right? And I said, Hey mom, I said, uh, you know, I sell real estate, right? And she laughed and she said, well, yeah. And I said, well, does your best friend, you know, do they know I sell real estate? And she goes, Sandy. And I said, yeah, does Sandy know I sell real estate? And she says, well, I think so. She was Jason. She, you know, diapered you when you were a baby. Like I, I'm sure she knows this. I said, but when's the last time that you've talked to her about real estate? She was like, like never. And I said, can I call Sandy? And she said, sure. I said, what's her number? Because I didn't have Sandy, right? Oh, wow. In my lead management system, right? And so I, so I got Sandy's phone number and I called Sandy and I said, Sandy, this is Jason Ferris. She was, oh my gosh, is your mom okay? Right, right. She's freaking <laughs> out, like because I never called her. Right. I mean, knew her all my life and never called her. And so I said, my mom's fine. She was, well, what's going on? I said, I just thought we, I should check in. Like, do you have my cell phone number? And she says, like, like now I do. And so we got to speaking. I said, Sandy, I'm just going to be blunt. Like, do you know I sell real estate? She goes, yeah, yeah. You do the real estate thing. Mm -hmm. Right. The real estate thing. And then uh, I said, well, hey, do you and Mark like ever have a need, right? To buy, sell, invest. Like, I'd appreciate you giving me a call. She's like, well, you know, we, we, we'll definitely let you know. And she proceeds to say that she goes, you don't handle short sales, do you? And I said, well, yeah, I can help you with a short sale. So she said, well, we're talking to the bank tonight. Can you come over? So long story short, as I help them to get, navigate their short sale, right? And in doing so, do a great job. And they introduced me to, you know, someone else. And it came like, I, I ended up tracking 12 sales, right? From me calling my mom. <laughs> For, from you calling your mom and just saying, hey, mom. Um, just a reminder, I do real estate and do your friends know? I don't think I've ever, I've never asked that question to my mom. Hey mom, do your friends know I sell real estate? Well, yeah, I mean, right. I mean, so it goes to this, you know, the CRM, how important it really is and that you put everybody in it and then you remind yourself how you know them. And then when is the last time you talk to them? It's not anybody's job other than ours to remind people that we sell real estate. It's, it's not my mom's job to tell her friends. It's, it's not her friend's job to remember that I sell. That is our job as real estate agents to keep top of mind awareness with everybody. And you can't do that without a really good CRM. That's very true, Jason. I, I like the way you put that, man. And so tell me, because you, you're a very, you're very focused on the relationships that you're building. And I think that's where a lot of real estate agents, as they're growing and choose to do the online part, they sometimes have that fall off. Yeah. How do you, how do you do it by focusing on, on the community? Because that's where a huge part of your growth has come, right? What community yeah. newsletter? I mean, Fres, yes, I see it. I read it. I saw that. Uh, tell me all about that. How does that come together for you? Well, um, First, let me say, I mean, uh, I mean, there are, we got thousands of people that, that watch your show now. Well, in and out, in and out. Yeah. Right. Thousands, man. That's why it's such an honor to be here. Um, but first, let me just say, like everyone who's watching, like this is what, what I love about telling people about this is that it's something they can duplicate tomorrow. 
right? You don't have to have been doing this for years. Like you can start tomorrow and start making a difference in your business and in your community. You just got to start. Um, and so for us, number one, it's, it's always been celebrating um, our community, right? Telling the stories of the people who live in our community. It's easy to do, right? You just, you could, I started off blogging, right? Like back in the day, uh, Tristan, I think that's when we very first met, right? It was, I mean, many, many years ago at at an RE bar camp, the original group. Um, And and so, but just telling the stories of the people, right? You know, everyone hears about the quarterback. Nobody hears about the offensive lineman, right? People, Mm. you know what I mean by that? Like if I write a story about the offensive lineman for Clovis High School, who had an exceptional year, right? Mom and dad are going to be sharing that story all over social media, right? Oh, Fresh, yes, Jason. They don't may even know who I am, but somebody recognized their son, right? Or their daughter on the cheerleading team or the volleyball or the water polo team. So there's something there, right? Like you, you build like and trust quickly when you recognize someone who's not frequently recognized, you know, the, the, the person behind the scenes that, making, that makes the superstar look so good. So doing that is a part of this. And so you pick up your pen or you get on your keyboard, write on a WordPress blog site, or this day and age, you can, it's even easier because you have something called Instagram, right? And Facebook, and you literally can put yourself and them in front of a camera, which we all have in our phones and just talk, right? Tell me about like what's going on in your life. Tell me what got you into football. You know, like tell me what happened on that play on Friday night. Like you may not think a lot of people are interested in it, but they are like the people are interested in what's going on in each other's lives. And so you just have to kind of nudge people along a little bit to share more about them. And so that's what we've done. We've got over 8,000 stories on fresyes.com, you know, and we've got like some major changes that we're making to the site here soon. Um, People kind of give me a bad time about the site. They say, you know, it's not all glossy, you know, and like typical real estate agent site art. And it's not, but we have something that others don't like we have content, (laughs) like we have no intent of being the search site for real estate over Zillow or realtor.com. Like we get that that's a more intuitive place to start your search for homes. I get that. But There's also something that people say, well, like, I want to know where the best burgers are, or, you know, I want to know like about the zoo because my kids are really into animals and does Fresno even have a zoo? Like, so they can search on our site for content. We got a call one time, Tristan, guy calls my cell phone and just says, Hey man, I wanted to thank you. You helped my wife and I figure out where we wanted to live. Yeah, in Fresno, I said, oh, great. I'm happy to, you know, I'm glad I could do that. Like, can you tell me a little bit more? Like, how did I help? And he said, man, we're big burger fans. And like, you had a a list on your site about all the different burger places to try. And so we went around and tried them all as we were, you know, renting. And we eventually figured out where we wanted to live based upon the best burger in town, right? But it it was so meaningful that he called, right? And of course, then I asked, I said, well, which one of my agents helped you? And he says, well, oh, I didn't know you sold real estate. Oh, God. so I'll tell everyone out there, right, that like that's been a challenge for us, right? That that fine line between always telling the stories of the community and making sure people know that at the end of the day, we're a real estate company. So, dude, I like this because now you can share with us the transition that you're you're putting this site into. So I'm assuming to make that more prevalent? Yeah, well, so we're gonna do like a tiled website. So it's gonna look visually much more appealing, but I'll just tell everyone right now because we're so close to launch, but like you'll, there'll be a, a picture of some amazing looking tacos, right? Okay. Uh, in a tile and you'll click on that and that'll be the uh, Fresh Yes approved list of tacos sites like places you can go to get tacos in fresno and then you'll have right of course the you know preferred agents like these agents are fresh yes approved and will be our team of course we'll have one for burgers we'll have one for friday night so we're going to have tiled activities and 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 then make it a little more prevalent about like where to search for homes and you know and how they can contact us about homes um but that that's really what we're doing is kind of like the best of always on our site and then when they click it we'll have more stories 
And then people, I, I'm excited about the people one. I've always loved telling the stories of the people. So imagine the face of, or a picture of a weathered lady, you know, her, her, her face looks leathered, maybe her hands do too. And she's maybe 90 years old. And you're, you can imagine what the picture looks like. And, you know, you click on it and then there's the story, right? Of her working in the vineyards, you know, picking grapes, rolling grapes so they can be raisins. And she does this every day, even on Christmas, right? Because uh, that's what you do when you give everything to raise two young men who eventually become, you know, a doctor and a teacher in our community. And she now owns her home outright because she was smart when she bought it, you know, and she got a 15 year loan instead of a 30 and she paid extra payments here and there. And so that's the stories that I just absolutely love to tell. And I love um, them, dude. And so you, you do get deeper into the community. And then, of, then of course, like when we tell, like, let's say we have a, a property, like, so the real estate side of this is, let's say we take, uh, take a listing in a neighborhood like historic Fresno High. Okay. There's going to be ice cream shops, coffee shops. There's going to be businesses in and around that part of our town. And so when we list a property, we'll deliberately look for stories to tell in that neighborhood. And so we'll write a story about the new coffee shop or we'll revisit the ice cream shop. And then we'll say in that story, you know, if you're interested in looking to purchase a home in this neighborhood, here's an amazing one, or click here for a list of all of the homes that are available to purchase in historic Fresno High. And we'll do an IDX search uh, through that. That's actually a hack I'm writing. Ah, <laughs> I it? just wrote that down. <laughs> Dude, that was really good. I like that. All right. So tell me, because I also noticed that you have a team. Yes. Do, does your team help? in creating the content too, or does that all fall on you or a social media person or a writer? Yeah. Tell me about that. We've never had the agents. The agents are absolutely welcome to write content. I think over the years, maybe three or four times have they done that. Um, they will share images like for Instagram or Facebook with us from time to time. Um, but yeah, no one's really jumped on that. So what I've always had to do is, is find like-minded individuals in our community, like people who want to tell the positives um, and employ them as independent contractors to help write stories. When I, the first, when I first started writing stories, business came to me. The more I wrote, the more business came. So eventually I hired a couple writers. I got on Twitter and just said, anybody want to help me write positive stories about our community? People raised their hand. I interviewed them, kind of judged their level of commitment you know, how good of writers were they? And then I put some to work. At one point, we had seven writers and a full-time editor. Um, we were putting out three or four stories a week. It was a lot to manage. It did get uh, a, a little expensive, you know, at, when you got that many writers. Um, now we've got one full-time writer and then uh, just maybe three other part-time plus me. So we put out a, and that was really like an adjustment we made during COVID. Um, was just like, hey, we, we've got to be a little financially more responsible here. Um, so although I'll tell you, the content I think that we put out during that time was, I, I think, exceptional. Like we put out coloring books. Uh, we put out um, uh, scavenger hunts. We put out really cool stuff to support restaurants. You could go to our site at any time and find out who was open and when and how to get food delivered and who really needed the help and maybe who was okay. Like, I think my team did an exceptional job. We do have a social media person, you know, who's, who's putting out content for us. Um, you know, we're, I, I'm a big fan of Gary Vee and, you know, no tweet, no comment left behind kind of thing. I, did we do a better job before we got big? Yeah, uh, I recognize that. We're really trying to put an emphasis on our future to go back to what worked for us always, which was, you know, this engagement and community. Um, it, it's, it's, it's like any business that scales, you know, it's like you, you kind of start tripping over yourself a little bit, right? And you, you know, like, oh, we forgot about that or, oh, we forgot about that. And so COVID for us, one of the things that we learned was like, hey, let's go back to kind of the brilliant basics, like, you know, what really worked, right? And what makes sense today after what our community has been through, and so we really have got a very clear focus for what the rest of 2021 is going to be and 2022 moving forward. All right. So let's go back to that one writer. You've got one writer. 
are they the independent contractor? They are. She, yeah, they are. She writes when she wants on what she wants. Um, but my expectation is at least an article a week um, and it's ready to go. So she'll log mm -hmm. into WordPress and she'll put it all in there and then I'll give it the once over myself or our social media person will give it a once over, you know, for SEO and just grammar, right? Just give it a quick once over and then we'll publish, share it out to Facebook and Instagram with ideally different images than we have on our website. Do you pay them per article or? Uh, she gets paid 450 a month, just something we agreed on. The rest of the writers in the past have gotten paid per article. All right. And there's a little bit of an expectation um, with her to kind of moderate on Facebook. So if she happens to see somebody spamming our Facebook post or, you know, like trying to have a, a conversation, she has admin rights and she's going to jump in there and, and be our voice. She's been with us for a really long time. I like that, dude. Yeah. Past client, past friend, you know, someone who taught me a lesson early on in, in business, in fact, um, she was a Zillow lead. Um, I mean, this goes back, Tristan. I mean, to the, I, I, I don't know, 11, 12 years. I mean, I, I'd have to look it up. But um, she was a Zillow lead and I responded quickly to her, right? Like, you know, speed the lead. I was always really good about that. And then I made a commitment to call her back between five and six and I didn't. So it was about 6.15 and she called me and says, hey, like, I'm not sure if you're our person or not. Like you made a commitment to call between five and six and it's 6.15, we haven't heard from you. And like, we're looking to sell, like we're looking to buy. And, and I, you know, like I was, wow. Okay. No, I am your person. Like I won't be, I won't be running behind again. Like, you know, and I, I was able to save that. Right. And, and she's bought and sold and and uh, referred me so much business I couldn't even count. Like, actually I could count, I could go into follow boss and tell you exactly how <laughs> many, um, because that's important too, right? Like, you know, like where our business comes from and, yep. and being able to source it for life. Dude, I'm, I'm digging this whole idea that, that you have. I'm, that you, you've had this for such a long time. I always tell people, you know, it's cool that you go on Zillow and realtor.com. There's nothing wrong with that, but they're using you. So use them, right? Just be smart about it. Yeah. But the idea behind it is to go all in on Google. You, you, I mean, Google, the most visited website on earth, it's Google and YouTube and yeah. you're doing it right where now you're going to incorporate both more, a more pronounced website along the lines of real estate with a lot more local content. Right. And I, I do, I do see you winning big there because now I'm like, dude, one article a week, that's, that's pretty awesome. That's 52 articles a year, all localized. It's funny how it adds up, you know, like I had my web guy do the count like the beginning of the year and I went, wow, that's a, we really put out a lot of content, you know? Um, we got an alert, we had a um, hundred thousand, our, our hosting service contacted and says, look, you're hitting a hundred thousand people coming to your site a month. Like you gotta kind of step up your plan and I'm like, man, are we, which is surprising. I just, I mean, I think back to our early days and we never hit that kind of number and, you know, we're bumping into it now. And so it, it encourages me to kind of keep my foot on the gas and, you know, let's put out more. Um, the other thing is, is the newsletter, our, our local, our newsletter that we put out, like I know we have a big audience of real estate agents out there, you know, it, it, and I just want to say, it's not the newsletter that has like, you know, copy and paste Betty Crocker uh, recipes in it, you know, and, and, and not, oh, turn your clock back. Like it's, or not just real estate, but it's, you know, you create some content and you put it in a newsletter and uh, you share things that are of interest to your community, like events. Like people are always wanting to know where, what's going on this weekend. Where can I go to have a drink or go dancing? Or, you know, is there a drive-in movie that's open? I mean, it, it, it was a little bit of a struggle during the, COVID, but you know, now that things are opening back up, like our newsletter is just rocking again. We're getting so many people opening our newsletter, forwarding it, sharing it. Um, it's one place. People like to get all their information in one place. Oh, can we talk on that really quick? We've got about three, four minutes. Dude, I want to do a part two to this because I think you are creating the base to what the future agents, teams, and brokerages need to create as we shift into this new world, 
because people don't realize how important email newsletters are nowadays. And, and what you're doing with SEO is, is genius. I love what you were doing before because I, I take notes on all these. And you mentioned that at one point you're like, dude, everybody write. You had a whole bunch of writers. And I love that idea. Now, now my brain's going, but here's my question. The newsletter, how often do you send it? Mm -hmm. Who do you send it to? And what does it include? Yep. So we have two newsletters that go out. Friday, we have our What's Hot and Happening. So that's all about what's going on in our community, right? Fresno, Clovis, Madera, Central mm -hmm. Valley. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and we just link, we, we do a lot of links out, which I know some people would kind of frown on me to be sending them to other pages, but um, it's opening up a separate window. So we're, you know, we do know that. Um, and so that one's got a really good open rate, about 85% open rate, which is that's insane. It's dude. insane. I can't, I just, that's our Ooh. most popular newsletter. Wow. Not as much work goes into that one as the Saturday newsletter, but the Friday newsletter is by far our more popular if, newsletter. Can you add me to your newsletter, buddy? I'm going to. Yes, I will. And it's, uh, by the way, when you see it, you'll be like, all right, it's cool looking and everything, but it's not like something super crazy. Like it's nothing that anybody couldn't do if they just committed themselves, you know, to doing it. Now, I'll say one of the secret sauces behind it is the consistency, right? Like it goes out every Friday, like without fail. Once a week. Um, the Once Friday week. one has been going on for about three years. The Saturday one has been going on for 12 years. So for 12 years, every Saturday, I have sent out a newsletter at 8 a.m. With the exception of one Saturday, MailChimp messed up. And it just didn't go out. And so by 9 a.m., I had an inbox full of people saying I've ruined their morning because I've interrupted their Saturday routine. And that please tell me I haven't stopped doing the newsletter. Wow. So by 9 a.m., I had figured out that what went wrong and I hit send and everyone got the newsletter. But other than that, it's been 8 a.m. consistently, even if like I had no power one time I was writing it with my phone and I still made sure we put something out there because we become so part of everyone's routine because it's every Saturday. Tristan, you'll love this. And I, I just people, and now I'm trying to, I'm going to leverage, I've, I've been, you know, there's been a lot of conversations recently about virtual assistants and how they can help bosses do more, right? Yep. Admins do more. And so I've been thinking that I need to get a VA to help me bring something back that I used to do, which was when someone unsubscribed from my newsletter, huh? I would reach out to them. Right. Sometimes we'd have their phone number. Right. They put their phone number in when they originally subscribed. Other times we would just have their email. But regardless, I'd pick up the phone. I'd call and say, you know, hey, Michelle, this is Jason with Fresius.com. I notice you unsubscribed from our newsletter. Right. It's an awkward moment. Right. Because they don't know that you see that. And I'd say, hey, I understand. And I'm not mad or upset. I said, except at myself because I'm trying to provide value for our community. And somewhere along the line, I must have failed. Right. So what can I do to earn your trust back so that you can resubscribe? What would you like to see in the newsletter? Like, you want, wow. to, see, you want to see more food? You want to see more homes? What do you want to see? Then they tell me, dude, that and is say, will you give me a second chance? They would. And then they'd resubscribe and they'd tell all their friends. Dude, all right. Part two and part three, because I'm already thinking Ed. <laughs> Part two is going to be all about your newsletter, all right? All right, fair I enough. I want to know. I want to know a lot of info, and and I already have a few people throwing in their email addresses. I don't know if you're going to get those. I, I see that, and I and I'll definitely grab them and subscribe them. If you're an agent, subscribe, copy, duplicate it. You know, it's a fantastic tool to connect with people in your community, and and drive business. We have a featured property in there, Tristan. That's one of the things that's in it. Uh, we have coming soon, which you know. Sh right uh, in there. And then we have one search button. So if you want to search for homes in this neighborhood, click here. And then we have our, you know, snippets of original content that we create, you know. Dude, uh, I feel like the next stage of what you're doing, which is bringing in that new website, I feel like that's going to just bring it all together. I think so. Dude, that is exciting. To, when does that go live? I, well, fingers crossed, 15th of July. All right. So we'll yeah, I've seen, I've seen it looks good. I just need to make sure it's mobile friendly and all that good stuff. Then we're rocking. 
All right, so let's plan on August sometime. I'll have I'll, I'll bury I'll bury will reach out to you. And we'll make it we'll make it happen, dude. I'm just gonna I'm gonna you copy me. I'd love to. Yeah, I'm gonna copy these emails so you don't have to copy them, and I'll send them over to you. Thank you. I appreciate that. There we go. Just did that. Well, dude, and what areas you hey, do you cover Yosemite or or that area? Because uh, we yeah. we do we do yeah we do mostly Fresno, Clovis, Madera, Kingsburg, like the Central Valley. We'll go up the hill uh, for the special clients. All right, man. Well, uh, I might have a referral for you, which is funny that way. That I, the last person we interviewed was sent him a referral too. So. Oh, well, perfect. <laughs> You're you gonna know. have a list of agents, you know, wanting to be a, a guest. I'm really honored. You know, I've been a, a huge fan of what you've done. Lab Code Agents is an amazing community. In fact, you know, like when I coach agents, I've got a list of kind of like minimum things you got to do, like and you're on the list, right? There's certain Facebook groups you need to be a part of, like you need to be actively involved in reading. You gotta have a great CRM, you can't be a secret agent. Like I just have some requirements, like minimum expectations, and you've been on that list for years. Thanks, man, that's super yeah. sweet. I, I appreciate that. Well, I'm a big fan of yours, holy cow. I'm part two and three, all right? All right, brother, I'm down. Thank you so much, Jason. Thank you. you. Thanks right. everybody.